This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. Um, we pray that you would open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy, first verse, but we pray that you would also go back and study God's word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have an awesome responsibility to go back and meditate on God's word. And when you do that day and night, and then you observe to do all according to that's written there, and he says, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. We are successful people because of what God is doing and has done in our lives. The temporal things that we see and we possess are just what it is, temporal. <clears throat> but we thank God for those things that are eternal. Set your affection on things which are above and not beneath. If this earthly house or this tabernacle was to dissolve, we have another building, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We've got to go back and read. We must go back and study. And we must encourage people. There is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. Nobody wants to talk about hell and heaven in that manner. But praise be to God, it's imperative that you meditate, study God's word, get around believers, hear the word of God, get in the fellowship. Hallelujah, so that you could be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, all the confusion, all the doubt, all the anguish that would try to come your way. And it is coming. Hallelujah. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Let's read 2 Timothy, starting at the first verse. 2 Timothy, hallelujah, starting at the, the first verse. 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting at the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. Right from the start, it's imperative that you circle that word and underline that word, by the will of God. Hallelujah, by the will of God. Your will is important in the matter, but if your will does not connect with the will of God, all you're doing is going to church, all you're doing is going through the motion. But when you're in the will of God, God speaks to your spirit, man, your heart, man. You begin to walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says that you shall live by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. It says, hallelujah, apostle Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that's in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my son, grace, mercy, and peace. Hallelujah, from God the Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank God for his unmerited favor, his mercy. Hallelujah. We're at peace right now because of the blood of Jesus. Jehovah Shalom, he is our peace. Hallelujah. With all the things that's happening and all the challenges that we face, we walk in peace. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It says in verse 3, it says, this is not just an encouragement to be faithful. He says, I thank God. Hallelujah. Whom I serve. Who are you serving? You cannot serve God and mammon. Hallelujah. Choose ye this day who you will serve. Hallelujah. I thank God whom I serve. Who are you serving? Hallelujah. As my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. A lot of stuff happening right here. We usually just go on. But listen to this. Who are you serving? Hallelujah. He says, even as my forefathers, and it's so imperative that we leave a legacy, hallelujah, we leave it in spiritual inheritance for our loved ones, for our sons and daughters, hallelujah, our great grands, our grands, in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayer. We are called to be prayer warriors. It says, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Hallelujah. What, 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 what lives? Faithfulness. Hallelujah, your serious faith. I am reminded of your serious faith, what you believe, what you trusted in, which first lived in your grandmother. Hallelujah, and so forth. It says, I am persuaded now that it lives in you also. Hallelujah, for this reason, I 
remind you, hallelujah, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, of self-discipline. Again, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power. We have a spirit of power. We have a spirit of love and praise be to God, self-discipline or a sound mind. So as we uh, operate in the things of God, this was not just written uh, from Paul to Timothy. This was for our learning. This is so we can read it and begin to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. And not only who we are in Christ Jesus, but what we possess in Christ Jesus. It says in verse 8, So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, hallelujah, his prisoner. But join me in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. The suffering of the gospel. So suffering, hallelujah, for the gospel. How? By the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. So we thank God that we are strong, not in ourselves, but we are strong in the Lord and the power of his might, who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. So you're trying to figure it out, trying to do the right thing and trying to get it right. First, remember where it came from. Hallelujah. This is what he says. He said, not because of anything we have done. Yes, we need to give our life over to Jesus Christ. Yes, we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we need to study the story and self proof. Yes, we need to go and fellowship in church. But praise be God, if you think it's just about what something you've done, it's by the grace of God, the power of God, the presence of God. Praise be to God. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm more than a conqueror because of the precious blood of Jesus. I'm the head not to tell. I'm above and not beneath. How did I, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. So we cannot get it twisted in thinking that it's about us. It's about our education, it's about our money, it's about how we are connections. Yes, we need to be connected. Yes, we need finances, hallelujah. But without Christ, we can do nothing. Verse nine, who have saved us, called us to a holy life. Somebody said, I'm saved. Come on, I'm saved. Don't the enemy say you're not saved. You're saved by the power divine. Saved by his precious blood. Jesus Christ died on Calvary. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Do you, do you believe? What are we being saved from? Eternal damnation. Hallelujah. It says, who have saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Mm, it's unmarried faith. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus, watch this, before the beginning of time. Before you got here, you and I got it. Write that down, underline that, praise be to God. I'll read it again. This grace, this unmerited favor was given to us in Christ Jesus. Who are you in? It's in him we live. Who are you in? We're in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Hallelujah. I'll read it again. But you can't just... You can't just run this. You have to go back and read. Just read. I know you want somebody to come and preach and tell you what the Lord has said. I love preaching. I especially some good preaching. My goodness, I've heard some good preaching in my life. But guess what? Can't take the place of you studying and reading and praying after you come from all those emotions and after you heard a good word. The thief is right there. Satan is a thief. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. Hallelujah. But if you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Verse 10 says, but he has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? 
and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Verse 11, and of these gospel, and of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. Hallelujah. That is why I am suffering, hallelujah, as I am. Now, do you think just because you're preaching and teaching and uh, all the things you're doing for the gospel's sake in the church, that the enemy's going to lighten up, that you're going to be okay? You are okay already because of what Jesus did. What, 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 what did we read earlier? Before the foundation of the world, praise God had it in place. Our peace. It, that wasn't an afterthought. Hallelujah. But he wants us to trust him in the storm. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, let me read it again. <clears throat> Verse 12. He says, that is why I am suffering as I am. Let us go back to verse 10. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who's our Savior? Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. Jesus is our Savior. Hallelujah. Jesus is our Savior. Appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death. Grave has no... No victory over us. Death has no victory over us. And has brought life and immortality to light through the Gospels. Read the Gospel. Read the good news. And of this Gospel, I was appointed an, a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet, I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah, we're not ashamed. It says, verse 13, what you heard from me, look, keep as the pattern of sound teaching. Don't switch up. Don't change. Hallelujah. It's a pattern. Follow the pattern. Again, what you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching. This is what we read as we read God's word, as we study God's word. Hallelujah. We keep it. Hallelujah. With faith, we keep it. And love in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, verse 13, what you heard of me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. Faith and love in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I want you to keep that because there's so many different religions. So many people talk about, you know, Jesus was just a good man. He was just a prophet. No, the King of kings, Lord of lords, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Hallelujah. So we have a comforter, paraclete, comes alongside us to help us and guide us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. We are not just put out to just do what we need to do. We have the guidance of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Now listen, it says, guard the good deposit that of the Holy Spirit. Where do we live? Who lives in us? It's always a blessing to know who, who lives in us. The greater one, praise be to God. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Pygelius and Hermes. May the Lord show mercy to the house of Onesiphorus because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. Of the contrary, when he was in Rome, 
He searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. God always has help for you. And when you're challenged as, as he was, Timothy, Timothy was, he, God had a ram in the bush. Hallelujah. And as you trust God in your storm, I, I, I want to emphasize in your challenges, in your storm, in your fight, the fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. The struggle that you see come upon you, just be reminded. He said the Holy Spirit, he said the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit will lead you and the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Before we even read all this, what um, my brother was talking about in terms of Onesiphorus and in terms of uh, the, the fellowship that he had. Notice what he said, he, the fellowship took place before that through the power of the Holy Spirit. In verse 13, what you heard from me keep as a pattern of sound teaching. So this is our pattern, amen? with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of who? The Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit, we said it earlier, I just want to go back and say it again, who lives in us. So with this happening, and we, what we just read by all the sinfulness, praise be to God, and what we just read, praise be to God, concerning uh, uh, Phagilius and how, how, how Hymogenes, what we just heard about these individuals, what preceded that was the power of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives. So whatever's going to come or whatever's going to go, it's preceded by the Spirit of Christ, the power of God that lives inside us. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. As you go through this week with the challenges and the changes, you got to say, greater is he. Greater is he that lives inside of me. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I want to read that again. Verse 13. What you heard of me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Verse 14. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You have a part to play now. You need to pray and read and study. You didn't just say the Holy Spirit. Is, no, you have a part to play. You need to pray. You need to study. You need to be in fellowship. It says, you know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelius and Hermogenes. They, what did they do? They deserted him. It says, may the Lord show mercy to the house of Onesiphorus. Because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. My God. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. Praise be to God. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy and find the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. God always has planned help for you. Don't ever think you are alone. Even when the physical bodies are not there to be in the presence to help you out, God has already mapped out your victory. We, we just read. I mean, when did he do it? From the foundation of the world. Amen. Let's move on to chapter 2 because we're out, out of time. Hallelujah. We're out, plumb out of time. Hallelujah. It says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace, God's unmerited favor, that is where? In Christ Jesus. Remember we said earlier, in him we live, move, have our being. Praise be to God. It says, and the things which you heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. That's imperative that you have individuals prepared for the gospel or being prepared for the gospel because they have an awesome job to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We have an awesome job to go and teach and encourage and build up. Praise be to God. 
those who don't know Jesus Christ, are those who are, are wavering back and forth of whom they need to serve. It's a reason for reliable and trust witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also qualify, hallelujah, be qualified to teach others. Endure hardness with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Endure hardness as a good soldier of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. No one serving a, a, as a soldier gets involved in, in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officers. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive a crown, a victor, victor's crown, unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crop. It says, reflect on what I'm saying. What the Lord will give you insight in all this. I am saying, it says, reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. These last two verses, it says in verse 5, chapter 2. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive a victor, victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. Verse 6, the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of what, hallelujah, of the crops. It says, reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight, hallelujah, into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, underline that circle, that remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, and this is my gospel. Again, this is the gospel that says, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, and he says, this is my gospel for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not changed. Hallelujah. It's not chained. Hallelujah. Or change. Hallelujah. Like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, verse 10, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, with eternal glory. Verse 11, here is a trust, trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. Isn't that good? If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Isn't that beautiful? For he cannot disown himself. This last uh, part of the scripture, you got to meditate on this, spend some time on it. Uh, it's talking about a workman being approved. It says, uh, a workman uh, approved by God. Keep reminding them of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. Hmm? It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Verse 15 says, do you do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teachers will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philotes who have wandered away from the truth. I don't have time, but you just go back and read, hallelujah, how we ought to stay in line, how we ought to trust God. These, they wandered away from the truth. You can wander away from the truth. It says, who have wandered away from the truth, they say that the resurrection has already taken place and they destroy the faith of some. When you wander away from the truth, you can destroy the faith of many. So be careful because you're going to have to give an account unto God in the last days. Hallelujah. It says, 
They say that the resurrection has already taken place and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles, not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. Hallelujah. If, hallelujah, a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the devil's desire of youth. Flee the, de the evil desires of youth. Flee the evil desires of youth. Flee the evil desires of youth. And pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. Close it now, close it now. Because you know they produce quarreling. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Hmm? Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. He didn't say, don't deal with them. Look what he says. Those who oppose him. Who's opposing you? Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct. Well, I says, in the hope. Let me hope. Let me hope. Hope faded not away. Hope reserved in heaven for us. Hallelujah. Those who oppose him must be gently instructed in hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. Last verse, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. This last one, again, as we close, I want you to go back and you find out where all the confusion is coming from. It says, those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your word today, and we thank you for those who will go back and read it and meditate on God's word. There's some awesome teaching and awesome word going forth this Sunday morning. And we are so thankful to be a part of what you're doing, hallelujah, in these last days. However, the entire congregation and those who would hear what, hallelujah, the word of God has been spoken, if they, if they would only go back and spend time, read, meditate on God's word day and night, and observe to do all according that is written then, you said, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous then thou shalt have good success. Father, God, have mercy. And thank you for your mercy that you showered upon us, even while we were yet sinners. Hallelujah. We thank you for peace operating in our family, in our home, in our community, in our neighborhood. We pray for the people around the globe who don't know Jesus and people close and family members who don't know Jesus. We pray for doors to be open. We pray, Father God, that we are a witness. Hallelujah. And there are witnesses amongst us that will share the good news and people will be set free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you as we close. Go forth in peace. If you never give me your heart over to Jesus Christ, won't you do so today? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross and you rose from the dead. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. I thank you, Father God, that I'm a believer and I'm standing on your promises. 
Thank you for guiding me to the right fellowship, that the word is being taught, and thank you for the strength to read the word for myself and be encouraged by so many and be an encourager. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday.